I was wondering in terms of the um, side effects, if there's one vaccine over another that is, I don't want to say safer, but has less potential negative side effects. The side effects and like the long term effects. I mean, of course, with me, we don't, or everyone doesn't really know because it's a new vaccine. So I definitely am afraid of that as well. Um, I think my biggest question would just be like, do we know the long term effects of this vaccine? I would feel better if. Um, more studies were done and they found out why they had those reactions. I think there are concerns about some people who take it don't feel well the next day or have, you know, fever or chills. But how would you compare? I think I think they're comparing those side effects to how they feel now, which is fine. But right. it seems like they should be thinking about, you know, the, the worst case scenario of taking the vaccine versus the worst case scenario of COVID. Right. And I think also what people should think about, too, is that those side effects that you're getting is from your body's immune system revving up. So like your body is literally creating a crap ton of antibodies, 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 antibodies. So it's like not fighting off any sort of like um, poisonous substance or anything like that, that would come from in um, like a virus or, or bacteria. It's literally given a little tiny portion of something that's on the virus coat, like kind of the outside of the virus, so that it makes antibodies. So that's what your body is reacting to. That is what you, that's why you feel awful is because your body is using all of its energy to make these little fighters for when the real work happens, like if you ever get in contact with COVID. These, the side effects of the vaccine are not a bad thing. The side effects are telling you that your immune system is ramping up and paying attention and working really hard to get rid of what it thinks is a threat. And actually it's just, you know, a spike protein, but that's okay. And is there one of those three that has the fewest side effects? Yeah, I think, I think so. I, I think the RNA, the two RNA vaccines are equally, we say, reactogenic. Um, and they probably give more side effects than the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. But again, I want to just put it in, in perspective. These are what I call Tylenol side effects. Um, you know, yeah. So if you get a little bit of a fever or chills or a little bit of a headache or a sore arm, take a Tylenol, grow up, you know, it's not the end of the world. And you can just take great comfort from the fact that you've got the, you know, you've got the immune system of a 20 year old and the more side effects you have, it's just probably reflects the more, you know, attention that your immune system is playing to this, it's paying to this. And what about things like reports of paralysis after the vaccine? Yeah, I, ha I haven't seen that, Jessica. I, I know there, are, you know, certainly with the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, there were there have been some extremely rare, like, you know, 10 in a million um, cases where people can have, you know, an extreme allergic reaction. And these tend to be people who already have this sort of immune system that overreacts in certain circumstances, you know, to bee stings or, you know, they're allergic to eggs or something. And those people, so if you know that you have, you know, strong allergies, then, you know, um, the process we have in place where people get vaccinated, but then they sit and wait for 15 minutes just so we can make sure that nobody is having, you know, these sort of extreme allergic reactions. That that really um, is is the safety net to make sure that people are safe. And and if the work, if you were, you know, one of the 10 in a million people who did have that happen, then you know that's why we have epipens and you know doctors standing by who can certainly uh, manage those side effects no matter how scurry they sound.